Kansky lecture series and this is going to be the chapter 14 part uh, 9 and in this part we are going to discuss about the central serous chorioretinopathy. So central serous chorioretinopathy is basically the edema that is involved the center of the macula usually the foveal area and usually sometimes associated with the pigment epithelial detachment as well. So there is a localized subretinal fluid which is between the neurosensory retina and the RPE and there is sometimes elevation of the pigment um, of the uh, pigment epithelium as well and most of the time it is due to uh, either due to the hyperpermeable RPE or due to the leakage from the choreo capillaries. So overall uh, overview the central serous chorioretinopathy CSR is an idiopathic disorder characterized by localized serious detachment of the sensory retina at the macula secondary to the leakage from the choreo capillaries through one or more hyperpermeable RPE site so uh, due to the leakage of the choreo capillaries CSR typically affects one eye of a young or middle aged man white man so usually it is very common in men and it is usually unilateral and a patient is either having a type A personality and on the steroid dose. So that is why steroid should be stopped in a cases of the central serous chorioretinopathy. The male to female ratio is 3 ratio 1. Female with CSR tend to be older. It present in two forms. Acute, self-resolving within 3 to 6 months and chronic. A SNP involving the complement factor H gene on chromosome 1 to predisposes to the chronic form of the CSR in white. The use of a steroid in any form including endogenous Cushing syndrome is significantly linked to this condition. Numerous other risk factors and associations have been reported including helicobacter uh, pylori infection, renal dialysis, stomach hypertension, psychological stress, pregnancy and sleep apnea syndrome. So there are other risk factors like infection, dialysis, hypertension, stress, pregnancy and sleep apnea syndrome. So what are the clinical features? Symptoms include unilateral blooding, metamorphosia, micropsia and dyschromatopsia. So there will be the blurring of vision, there is going to be the distortion of images, there is going to be the shortening of image and there is going to be the changes in the color. Science visual equity is typically 6 by 9 to 6 by 18 but may improve with the low um, strength convex lens correction of acquired hypermetropia from retinal elevation. So visual equity is usually between 6 by 9 to 6 by 18 and usually if you add the plus uh, convex lens it will improve the vision. Round or oval detachment of the sensory retina at the macula can be seen. The subretinal fluid may be clear particularly in early lesion or turbid. So usually the subretinal fluid is clear. Precipitants uh, may be present on the posterior retinal surface. One or more uh, depigmented RPE foci, often small bed of variable sizes, may be visible within a neurosensory detachment. Small patches of RPE atrophy and hyperplasia elsewhere in the posterior pole may indicate the site of previous lesion and are typically seen on FAF imaging. So sometimes uh, the RPE atrophic patches can also be seen. Chronic lesions may be associated with subretina, a substantial underlying atrophic changes. Fluid can sometimes track down in a gravity dependent fashion. Gravitational tract best shown on FAF imaging and can occasionally progress to the pullus CSR. The optic disc should be examined to exclude a congenital pit as a cause of a neurosensory detachment. So, optic disc pit should also be excluded in the case of a central serous retinopathy. So, let's see figure 14.50. So, you can see that there is a elevation of the uh, foveal area. B is showing as a resolving foveal CSR. Uh, C is showing us an FAF of the same eye, D is showing us a scarring, um, OCT showing elevation of a sensory, uh, uh, D is showing FAM imaging in the chronic phase showing a gravitational uh, track below the optic disc. So this is a gravitational effect. OCT showing elevation of the sensory retina in the acute phase. So you can see that there is an elevation of the sensory retina and this is an RPE. So what are the causes of the courses of the um, uh, CSR? Spontaneous resolution within 3 to 6 months with return to near normal or normal vision in around 80%. So usually it can resolve on its own 80%. Recurrence is seen in up to 50%. Some patient about 15% follow a chronic course lasting more than 12 months. So sometimes if it 
um, have more than 12 month duration prolonged detachment is associated with gradual photoreceptor and rpe degeneration and pre uh, permanently reduced vision so if there is a long term detachment it can lead to the photoreceptor loss and it can lead to the permanently reduced vision multiple recurrent attacks may also give a similar clinical picture cmo cystoid macular edema cnv choroidal neovascularization or rpe tear may develop in small minority bullous csr is characterized by the large simple or single or multiple serous ret retinal and rpe detachment so if there is a very large single or there are multiple serous detachment it is known as a bullous csr in acute um, central serous chorioretinopathy the visual acuity may again be improved with a plus lens and a spontaneous resolution usually occur within 3 to 4 months so how is will you investigate ampullar grid confirms metamorphosia corresponding to the neurosensory detachment so you can ask the patient to look at the ampullar grid chart which is basically a grid pattern uh, on a usually white or black background and you fixate on a central point and you ask the patient if there is any kind of distortion in the lines OCT shows an optically empty neurosensory elevation. Other findings may include one or more small RPE detachment precipitate on the posterior surface of the detached retina and thicken choroid. So there will be the neurosensory retina elevation. There can be a epithelial, a pigment epithelial detachment as well and there can be thickened choroid as well. Degenerative changes may be seen in a chronic or recurrent cases. Fluorescent angiography show an early hyperfluorescent spot that gradually enlarges an ink blot or less commonly form a vertical column smoke stick followed by diffusion throughout the detached retina. So the fluorescent angiography will show the early hyperfluorescence which can be in an ink blot fashion or it can be smoke stack appearance. An underlying uh, paired pigment epithelial detachment can be demonstrated multiple focal leaks or diffuse areas of leakage can be evident particularly in chronic or recurrent disease FAF show a focal decrease in fundus autofluorescence at the leakage size and as at site of old lesion a gravitational tract is sometimes seen so it will show us a decrease in autofluorescence ICGA endocyanin green angiography the early phase may show dilated or compromised choroidal vessels at the posterior pole and mid stage areas of hyperfluorescence due to choroidal hyperpermeability so there can be dilatation of the choriocapillaries and due to which there can be hyperfluorescence substantial foci are commonly visible so this is a figure or FA of the central serous chorioretinopathy A and B is showing us an ink blot appearance C and D is showing us a smoke stack pattern apparent 14.52 is showing a sub threshold micropulse laser treatment of a central serous chorioretinopathy a is showing prior to treatment b is showing after the successful treatment so how will you manage a case of a csr observation is appropriate in many cases all treatment modalities can be associated with rpe tear formation which can also occur spontaneously so usually observation can be done because most of the time the uh, lesion resolve on its own of the, within three to six months oral spironolactone which is basically uh, a diuretic can be given for 40 milligram twice daily result in fast, faster resorption of the subretinal fluid than no treatment in acute csr so it will uh, result in faster resolution so corticosteroid treatment should be discontinued uh, if possible particularly in a chronic recurrent and severe cases laser sub threshold micropulse tired laser to rp side of leakage has shown a good result in several studies and is associated with significantly less retinal damage on oct than conventional photocoagulation so sometimes when there is a chronic uh, uh, leakage then uh, you can give a sub threshold tired laser to the rpe side PDT is being used the 50% of the uh, it dose is uh, used 50% of the usually that we use for the CNV. So PDT at 30 to 50% of the dose used for CNV in conjunction with the 50% light intensity typically leads to complete resolution including in severe chronic cases and associated with the considerably lower incidence of a significant choroidal ischemia and then higher intensity regime. Intravitreal anti vegf agent sh may show some problems and are uh, commonly used in congestion with PDT. Others case reports show benefit with a variety of agents including aspirin, beta blocker, mifepristone, epilirinone and control but control assessment is limited to date.
so this is all forms tip all forms of corticosteroid treatment should be discontinued if possible in a patient with chronic or recurrent central serous chorioretinopathy so next is an idiopathic macular telangiectasia so whenever there is a dilated capillary vessels that are present and the macular area and no other cause has been associated it is known as idiopathic uh, disorder and it can usually leads to bleeding and exudate formation so idiopathic macular telangiectasias i m m t or mactel is a condition of unknown pathogenesis it may be more common than previously believed and can be confused with the diabetic retinopathy prior rvo and other causes of macular vascular changes a family history is present in a small proportion of cases type 1 is an aneurysmal telangiectasia type 2 is a periphobial telangiectasia and type 3 is an occlusive telangiectasia so basically type 1 consists of a telangiectasia which is basically the dilatation or uh, aneurysm formation at the retina this may be co closely related to the coats disease or more specifically the milder form of coat previously known as a labor miliary aneurysm so uh, sometimes it is also related to the coats disease which is basically the uh, coats disease is basically a telangiectatic vessels and exudate and retinal detachment formation it generally involve only one eye and both the peripheral retina and macula can be affected patients are typically middle aged men males so coats disease is basically in a younger male and it is a middle aged male symptoms include mild to moderate blurring of vision in one eye signs include telangiectasias and microaneurysms early signs may be subtle and more readily detected on a red free photography so you can see telangiectasia and microaneurysm in the macula larger aneurysm form as the condition progresses macular edema include the cystoid changes chronic leakage and lipid deposition oct demonstrate retinal leak thickening Mm, uh, CMO, so there can be cystoid macular edema. There can be localized exudative retinal detachment as well. FA show telangiectasia and multiple capillary and venular and arteriolar aneurysms. So, uh, the fluorescent angiography will show telangiectasia. There can be uh, aneurysms which are capillary, venular, and arteriolar with late leakage and CMO. There is a minimal non-perfusion. Treatment is with laser to point and areas of leakage but can be technically difficult depending on the proximity of your changes to foveola. Intravitreal and VEGF inhibitors can be uh, may be effective. So sometimes you can treat it with the uh, a point laser or to the area of the leakage. So let's see figure uh, 14.53 which is showing us an idiopathic macular telangiectasia type 1 aneurysmal telangiectasia so you can see that there is exudate formation there is a retinal thickening a is showing us some mac uh, aneurysm and telangiectasia which is surrounding by the area of the ring of exudate in a late disease b is showing fa in early disease showing micro aneurysm c is showing fa early phase of the eye in a showing telangiectasia temporal to the fovea so these are all telangiectasic vessels D is showing FA late phase in I show, of A showing leakage. Next is a periphobial telangiectasia. So it is not in the fovea, but around the fovea, there are the dilated capillaries uh, in the macula. This bilateral form is more common than type 1 and usually has a worse visual prognosis. The prevalence may have underestimated in the past and can be as high as 0.1% in people over the age of 40 years. So usually it is uh, it occurrences about 0.1 percent. Male and females are equally affected. Onset is in middle age, so it does not have any gender predilection. So it is occurring in the middle age. In contrast to type one, findings are generally limited to the periphobial area. Degeneration of the molar cell is thought to be an important uh, pathogenic mechanism. Symptoms include blurring in one or both eye. Distortion may be a feature. Signs early changes are subtle, manifesting as a lack of a foveolar reflex. Uh, grayish loss of the uh, parafoveal retinal uh, uh, transparency extending up to one disc diameter from the foveola, initially temporal to and later surrounding the fovea. So, most of the time, there is a loss of the parafoveal transparency, and it is usually one disc diameter away from the foveola.
and most of the time it is starting uh, temporally and then surrounding the fovea fine superficial crystalline retinal deposits are common mildly ectatic capillaries can be seen in the later stages so sometimes there are ectatic capillaries can be seen these telangiectatic vessels are uh, present in the inner and the outer retina best seen in the venous phase of the fluorescent angiography paraphobial telangiectasia may not be visible clinically but often uh, described more readily by the red free photography and autofluorescence so he, these are most readily seen on the green filter or autofluorescence blunted slightly dilated venules are often associated with ectatic capillaries and in later disease, disease stage with the pigmented hyperplasia so they are dilated venules and they can be the pigment hyperplasia these venules suddenly turn at a right angle into the deeper retina the abnormal vessels can proliferate to subretinal neovascularization distinct from the cnv but similar to retinal angiomatous proliferation the proliferative stage of the condition these vessel leak resulting in the elevation of the serous retina easily seen on oct analysis so most of the time uh, these are usually seen as an abnormal vessels that can proliferate into the subretinal space and so, uh, sometimes it is uh, it is similar to the uh, rap which is a retinal angiomatous proliferation and uh, it can lead to the a detachment of the retina are uh, easily seen on oct analysis foveal atrophy may stimulate a lamellar hole so it can also uh, complicate into a retinal hole, lamellar hole small rpe plaques develop in many patient often associated with right angled venules aneurysm are uncommon but have been reported exudation does not tend to be a feature of mactal 2 so exudation is not present in the parafoveal telangiectasia Visual acuity does not co deteriorate to less than six by sixty unless CNV occurs. CNV in this condition tend to be carry a better prognosis than in AMD. So it can also lead to CNV, and when the CNV develops, it leads to the uh, uh, visual acuity up to less than six by sixty. So let's see figure fourteen point five four. So this is an idiopathic macular telangiectasia type two A, showing us a subtle. loss of a temporal uh, parafoveal uh, transparency so you can see that there is a loss of transparency b is showing fa at 45 seconds of a patient in a showing telangiectasia so these are telangiectasias that are visible c is showing us pigment plaque neovascular changes faf uh, of the patient in c showing us a dilated um, venule that suddenly turn at a right angle into the deeper retina so right angle into the deeper retina early phase uh, e is showing us an early phase fa of a patient in c showing a neovascular membranes uh, and fa show a late leakage arrow so now in this phase there are the uh, neovascularization has been uh, present so oct findings are the key to diagnosis the formation of a hyporeflective inner retinal spaces of variable size morphologically distinct from those in cmo is characteristic in moderate to not early in disease so there will be like a in the inner retina there are going to be the hyporeflective spaces an inner retinal uh, an inner ramellar cyst that enlarges with progressive disease is commonly seen underlying the fovea thinning and disruption of the photoreceptor layer is also common and may occur early pigment clumps are shown as intraretinal hyperreflective plaques with posterior shadowing so whenever there are pigment clumps they will be like a hyperreflective plaque and there will be the shadow of these plaques foveal thinning is common but diffuse parafoveal retinal thinning is variably present hyperreflective inner retinal dots corresponding to the telangiectatic vessels are uh, seen at the early stage in many uh, patients so uh, the telangiectatic vessels will appear as an hyperreflective retinal retinal dots faf which is a fundus autofluorescence uh, changes occur uh, early in the disease course and may pr uh, proceed clinically detectable signs central foveal heightened autofluorescence is a common early finding these gradually increase in extent but in advanced disease an area of a well demarcated central hyper autofluorescence develop so they are going to be the autofluorescence of these lesion but in advanced cases there will be the central hypoautofluorescence 
Retinal crystals and pigment clamping give retina a reduced autofluorescence, irregular central and periphery, uh, peripheral areas of increased signal surrounded patches of a decreased signal may be seen. Fluorescent angiography in early disease show bilateral uh, perifocal telangiectasias with early leakage from an abnormal vessel progressing to diffuse leakage thaw without a CMO. So in early phase, usually there will be the perifoveal telangiectasias and they're going to be leakage from these uh, vessels and after that they're going to be the diffuse leakage. The cystoid spaces identifiable on OCT do not show hyperfluorescence on FA. FA is also used to confirm the uh, CNB. Macular pigment op uh, optical density and pod imaging shows a possible pathognomic pattern of oval reduction in density corresponding to the late distribution of the hyperfluorescence on FA. M pod is preserved from 6 degree outward. Basically, it is an imaging technique which is um, uh, measuring the density of the macular pigment and there is going to be the reduction in the density which is corresponding to the hyperfluorescence on the FA and usually it is reserved for 6 degree outward. Treatment include intravitreal anti-VEGF agents, uh, decrease leakage on FA in a non-proliferative stage but uh, are probably not helpful visually. They are likely to be useful in a proliferative stage, especially for CNV. So, anti vegf agents are used in the cases of a, when there is a CNV. Number third is a type 3 is occlusive telangiectasia. This extremely rare condition present in late middle age and carries a poor visual prognosis. The manifestation related to capillary occlusion rather than telangiectasia. Progressive occlusion of paraphobial capillaries with marked uh, aneurysmal dilatation of the terminal capillaries. It is distinct from type 1 and type 2 macular telangiectasia. So whenever there is uh, going to be the occlusion, capillary occlusion, uh, it is known as a occlusive uh, telangiectasia. And it is basically the progressive occlusion of the paraphobial capillaries and with the marked aneurysmal dilatation of the terminal capillaries it and it carries a poor visual prognosis so next is a cystoid macular edema so whenever there is a cystic changes in the macula and there is an edema or leakage in the retina in the center of the macula it is known as a cystoid macular edema so cystoid macular edema result from the accumulation of the fluid in the outer plexiform and the inner nuclear layer of the retina with the formation of a tiny cyst like cavities so most of the time it is usually in the outer plexiform layer and the inner nuclear layer and it uh, leads to the formation of a cyst initially accumulate intracellularly in the molar cell with subsequent rupture Coalescence of a smaller cavities may occur over time with subsequent progression to the foveal lamellar hole with irreversible impairment of a central vision. So whenever there is a, a coalescence of these cavity, it can lead to the lamellar hole formation. CMO is a non-specific manifestation of any type of a macular edema causes include. So it can occur after the ocular surgery or laser, for example, in the case of after phacoemulsification, after PRP pan retinal photocoagulation and miscellaneous other position it can also occur in a retinal vascular disease like diabetic retinopathy retinal vein occlusion it can also occur after inflammation intermediate uveitis severe or chronic uveitis of any kind it can occur after drug induced like a tropical prostaglandin derivative like retinal dystrophy retinitis pigmentosa condition involving the vitreoretinal traction epiretinal membrane it can also occur after the cnv it can also uh, occur after the fundus tumor like uh, retinal capillary hemangioma, systemic disease, for example, chronic renal failure. So this is a histology of the cystoid macular edema showing a cystic spaces in the outer plexiform layer and the inner nuclear layer. Diagnosis symptoms may include blurring, distortion and micropsia. Signs include the loss of the foveal depression and a thickening of the retina and multiple cystoid area in the sensory retina so uh, best seen in the red free uh, light with the uh, using a fundus contact lens so you know there on oct you can see that there is a loss of a foveal depression there will be the retina will be thickened and there will be the cystic spaces in the sensory retina optic test swelling in sometimes present a lamellar hole may be visible features of associated disease can also be visible ancillary charge demonstrates sl sl uh, central blurring and distortion FA uh, show a petaloid pattern is seen due to a dye uh, accumulation in a microcystic spaces in an outer plexiform layer. So uh, the FA will show a uh, clinic um, classic uh, flower petal, uh, pattern appearance.
OCT show retinal thickening with cystic hyporeflective spaces and loss of foveal depression. A lamellar hole may be de demonstrated in advanced cases. So this is an cystoid macular edema. A is showing us a red image. And B is showing us an FA late phase showing us a flower pattern appearance. Uh, this is a flower pattern appearance and D is showing OCT of hyporeflective spaces can be seen within a retina macular thickening and there is a loss of a foveal depression. So that's it for the part 9. See you in the next lecture.